this document confirms the Majestic 12 or MJ12, which is a group that was really way back when during the Eisenhower days where it was a bunch of high ranking members when they started to put together this kind of group of we're the only ones who are going to know what's going on with UFOs and UAPs and extraterrestrials. And then it talks about, you know, the crashed craft. This talks about crashed craft and retrieval and all kinds of interesting stuff. So. Bodega is a guide and a storyteller, escorting you through the night, lighting the way, warding off thieves, ghosts, demons, and other oddities. Along the journey, his companions would often share with him the most curious of stories that he'd record in his codex. Perhaps you just might find yourself traveling with the Codega and sharing one of yours. Click that like. Yeah. If you're new here, subscribe and have the bell hit for notifications to stay up to date on all the new content. On the night of October 16, 1957, Antonia Vilas Boas, a 23 year old Brazilian farmer, was working alone on his family farm in San Francisco de Salas. The rural fields were quiet, illuminated only by the dim light of the moon, when suddenly a bright red star like object appeared in the sky. As it approached, Boas realized it wasn't a star, but a large, egg-shaped craft landing in his field. Panicking, he attempted to flee in his tractor, but it would not work. Before he could escape on foot, he was seized by small humanoid beings and dragged aboard the craft. Inside the ship, Boas described being stripped and subjected to medical examinations by the beings. Most disturbingly, a female entity with humanoid features approached him. According to Boas, the alien encounter had a clear biological agenda. He was forced to interact with the female in what he believed was an attempt to create a hybrid child. Boa's encounter didn't end there. Afterward, the, be the beings released him from the craft, leaving him traumatized and physically ill for days. His story, dismissed by some as a fantasy, remains one of the earliest detailed accounts of alien abductions, sparking fear that these beings are not just curious observers, but have a deeper and more invasive purpose for humanity. Hey everyone, I'm Rai, the Codega, your lantern bearer in the shadow of the strange and unexplained. So in episode 15, The Terrifying Truth About Alien Abductions with Karen Wilkinson, we explored Karen's firsthand experiences of lifelong abductions she told in her book, Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest. Tonight, we dive even deeper into the sinister alien agenda she's uncovered, one that seeks to corrupt human bloodlines. In her book, Karen addresses critical questions. What are these aliens and why do they come at night? What happens during abductions? And most chillingly, what are their ultimate goals? This isn't the sanitized version of UFO encounters we've been, we're used to hearing. This is the raw, disturbing truth. So I'm really looking forward to where this conversation will go tonight. And with that, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's come out and watched and liked and subscribed to my channel. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you want to support the show, as usual, you could become a member. Uh, you can uh, also check out my store on uh, Printify. The links are all down below. I have some really cool merch and I hope you like it as much as I do because I do like it. I think it's pretty cool. All right. Um, and, and with that, I'm going to bring Karen to the stage. So, Karen. Welcome to Codega's Codex of Curi Well, welcome back to Codega's Codex of Curiosities. Hi, Rai. I am just so happy to be back here with you. I feel like we're old friends. I love having talks with you, and we talk so much off screen. I'm glad we're actually talking now while we're recording because we cover some fun topics together. And I do have to say, I love your store. Hey, y'all, I'm still using my notebook all the time. It's almost empty, so I got to go back there. And my son has taken my t shirt because he loves it. 
um, so much that I'm going to have to order another one for myself. That is cool. Well, I've updated the store. I've got some new logos in there and some other cool uh, designs as well. I, I took a little bit of time to revamp it. So hopefully there'll oh, be some cool. other stuff in there you might like. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, you have a great store. I love your stuff. Um, and I'm just, again, happy to be here with you. Love the intro today. That's an, a great, um, an interesting and a great story. I love that one, too. Um, and that's right in your neck of the woods. So I, Exactly, exactly. A little bit south, but we're, uh, we're in that area. You know, like in this area, there is a ton of UFO activity. Um, personally, myself, I saw one on my patio uh, where I used to record up top here. I actually saw something. Uh, some lights in the sky that don't fit the narrative of airplanes or any other craft that we know. Um, so there was something going on. I don't know what. So, uh, and, and Karen, why don't you tell everyone where they can actually find your books? Uh, well, your book, sorry. And mm -hmm. if you have uh, any websites you want to plug or YouTube channel as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, soon, hopefully it'll be books, plural. I am working on my next one, but um, I don't know when that'll be finished. And obviously there's a a process to get through with that and uh gonna be working on a second edition of this one with some just little tweaks and some additions here and there so um but you can find it at lamarzuli.com or lamarzuli.net um you can find links through my website which is here on the screen karen wilkinson author.com you can find all of those links on my social media just click on that link tree and it'll take you to whatever you need to find there um on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, whatever social media you prefer. Hopefully you'll find me there just under my name or under Karen Wilkinson author. So um, the book is exclusively right now only on lamersley.net. Um, although you can find his latest book on Amazon, um, which I was honored to write a forward to, which is Rungs of Disclosure. Love this book. Highly recommend it. Um, and uh, part of, and there's a chapter in there too that contains some of pieces from my book as well. So I'm excited about that. Um, but thank you for that, for offering that, to let me share that information with everyone. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course, of course, you know, and and if anybody is also looking for her content, you know, uh, Karen posts regularly in my Facebook group, the Codegas Codex of Curiosity. So, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to have you as an active member. That's awesome. I really appreciate wow. that. And like, like you were saying, yeah, we, we we talk a lot before the before the actual uh, recording and you know off the air and it, it was the same same with Vicky Joy Anderson too you know uh, I, I, you're you're a good friend and just an amazing uh, um, person as well and and so so Karen why don't you just give a brief synopsis about your book and and we'll go from there okay great yes um so the book is Stolen Seed Evil Harvest and it is my account of my lifelong experiences and excuse me. So and it just is kind of lets people know who and what these non-human alien entities are, what happened to me from a firsthand experiencer point of view. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there sharing secondhand information or retelling someone's story. But this is me from my story. I wrote this. This is just my words. Um, and it also has, there's some really good positive uplifting things in there as well in the book. Um, I didn't want it to be all negative or all scary. And so I also included some of the really amazing positive experiences I've had with just angelic beings and things that God has done in my life that were really beautiful. So while a lot of it is shocking or maybe shocking to some, there is a warning on the cover. Um, there are parts of it that are also um, enlightening and, and uplifting. So Fantastic, fantastic. And and how long have you been having these experiences for? Like, how, right. when did they start? So I was being taken from my earliest memories. I don't have a memory of a time in my life where I wasn't being taken. My earliest memories um, of being a little kid, like probably about three, around the three to four year old time, was of being afraid of people who were tall and blonde and fair skinned and fair eyed because I already was having these traumatic experiences with what we call the Nordic alien entities. These entities have a human appearance about them, but they're very tall and thin. They have, their eyes are larger than our eyes, you know, in comparison, maybe, um, I couldn't say maybe about one and a half times larger. And they will have like a very uh, light colored hair. Um, 
between like a blonde and brown, it always seemed to me almost like a clear color. Like it picked up whatever colors were around, almost prism like. Mm -hmm. And their eyes were just um, really light, like light blues or light greens or aqua colors, anything in that kind of spectrum. So they didn't all look the same. They all looked different. There were some that were clearly male, some that looked clearly female. Um, and, but they weren't all like cookie cutter, like the same, like the typical gray entities. Um, when I was about five years old, I started remembering the actual abduction scenarios that were happening to me, but I'll pause here in case you have a question about I do. I, I do <laughs> actually, because, because I know a lot of people <clears throat> reference the Nordics as like mm -hmm. our friendly family, galactic family, you know, mm -hmm. and by your account, it doesn't seem that they are this friendly galactic family right and and what you have to remember is what we're talking about is a created race of beings they have the same creator that we do this i know from firsthand experience and from confronting them with this information and that's why they had to leave me alone because i could call on jesus once i realized that and was like hey wait a minute you know put all those pieces together from the things that weren't taught to me in churches that weren't taught to me that are in the bible and once i learned that we had the same creator and that they're actually a created race of beings some people might refer to them as angels some might refer to them as the sons of god little g some people might refer to them as the Beneha elohim in hebrew and um everyone has different thoughts on this but so, these entities are sorry just to interrupt you though. Mm -hmm. So the Elohim, could that mm -hmm. not also be, because Elohim does not reference like, like God-like beings almost in a way. Um, it, and, yeah, go ahead. It does. It depends on what context it's used. You know, the Hebrew and the Greek languages can be complicated and you have to look at the context in which it's used. And so when they're referencing these beings, they, it references the sons of God or his created beings. And then okay. sometimes Elohim refers to God himself or can you say something like that. So you have to really look at it in the context at which it's given. But there are places in the Bible that refer to them as the B'nai Ha'elohim or the sons of God. In Genesis 6, for example, when it says the sons of God, that's where it would be used, saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and took of them wives of all that they chose. This is talking about this, a section of this order of beings who chose to disobey God and they for lack of a better word, fell, you know, from grace and decided to rebel against God. And the biblical account is, is full of accounts of fallen beings, fallen, what we might call angelic beings, which again, is kind of a misnomer, but I'll use it as a general placeholder for what they are. Um, and this is just one example of those beings. And so what we're dealing with now in modernity, when you talk about a Nordic or a gray or a reptilian, with the exception of the smaller grays that would show up in my room at night and things like that, who are cookie cutter like, and I can talk about them a little bit more separately, but all the other beings are unique entities that were created by God, you know, in service to him, just as we were created. And they're different from us. And some of them are good and some of them are not. And I think I might have touched on that last time where, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes a good from a bad person. And it's the same with these entities. It might be hard to tell a good from a bad angelic being. And the bad guys don't announce themselves. They don't come up and say, hey, I'm going to rob you or I'm going to carjack you or, you know, I'm a, you know, going to hurt somebody. They just don't advertise that. They come in and they sweet talk you or, you know, like a typical politician or something like that, where you just don't know what you're going to get. Not, not um, dismissing politicians. I'm just saying, you know, you don't know what you're getting. And so yes. I always caution people where they want to believe that these are benevolent space brothers. Well, there are good angelic beings who do, do still obey God and still do carry out his will, but we're not equipped to figure out which ones are which. You know, so it, it's it's a it's a dangerous space to play in, and we are advised biblically never to play in that space because it we're not as intelligent and as strong and as equipped as they are, and they are interdimensional, whereas we are 
in this dimension, in this world right here. And we are very restricted in that. We are. We are. I, I almost believe, though, sometimes though, that we are a little more powerful than we are led to believe. Like there is some sort of governor on us that is restricting our abilities or mm -hmm. our, our wisdom, or, you know, our ancient collective wisdom. Well, yeah, you can look back to the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and all those things and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And and the more that we know and the more abilities that we're given, the more dangerous, you know, that can become. And I think there's a reason why we're restricted. We already live in a fallen world. Can you imagine if we could do more harm than we're already doing as humans? Oh, my goodness. I mean, thank goodness we are restricted to the level that we are. Um because if we had half of the abilities that these entities have, I don't think the world would still be in existence right now. And we certainly wouldn't have the opportunity to exercise our free will to decide how we do want to live our lives. You know, do we want to follow God? Do we want to believe in Jesus? Do we want to believe that he came and his completed work on the cross for us? Or do we choose to believe something completely different? And and that's what that free will encompasses. And and I'm really grateful that we have that and that we are restricted when it comes down to that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. But that's my opinion. So, you know. <laughs> no, no. And and we are, everyone is entitled to their opinion. And sometimes their opinions are a little more, um, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, and I can respect your opinion for sure. You know, I, I, I definitely, you. definitely believe that, you know. And so, so you... So there is a belief, though, that these Elohim or these fallen ones are mm -hmm. also aliens as well that are abducting us. Right. I mean, we call them aliens today. They're called, you know, maybe extraterrestrials or aliens or non-human alien entities, whatever you want to call them. It's simply just a word to describe something that's not human. So again, we, we kind of tend to group things into these massive categories that don't really describe who and what they are. And as societies change, things get rebranded, you know? So yeah. today's branding is ETs or extraterrestrials, which just means something that isn't us. Because I do believe they probably lived here before us, before, you know, the creation of man on here, on the earth, they were here. And it explains a lot of the ancient um, structures like the pyramids and the things that we have that we certainly couldn't even build today. Um, and there's a lot of biblical um, history to back that up and in, in all kinds of other um, belief systems and ancient texts and things like that as well. It's backed up all over the world in different cultures, this same information. I, I find that interesting. And I, and I do believe that. I believe that you know, that they created a lot of this, though I do believe that we were also around maybe serving them in a certain way as a slave species to to help them help them do this. But yeah, they're, they're I do yeah. believe that they were around. They created some of these sites that uh, we have no idea. You know, we still don't have an a, a, an idea what for, you know, I think we're we're starting to try to grasp oh, that. Yeah. And I and, and I do believe that powers that be know what these sites were for. Um but uh, again, where it's being withheld from us. So, oh, right. You know, we have no idea how much of our history is true. All we have is information that's been fed to us and given to us, but we have no way of confirming these things. So we don't know. We don't know what's under our oceans. We don't know what's under our feet. And we certainly don't know if our history is even nearly correct. You know, so <clears throat> there's so much that we're just at the mercy of those creating the narrative and creating the textbooks and providing the information. I totally agree. You know, like in the past, we used to rely on our storytellers. You know, that's how we would pass on this information. Right. Then we went into, you know, <laughs> writing it down into books and and who wrote the books? It was the victors. It was it was the people in right. charge. And all you have to do is go through, go past one generation. You just need to skip one generation. And what you've written is now the new history you know because the, gen exactly. the last generation is the one that forgot you know they're they're gone they're forgotten and now this is our new history and right. you know, look at our children that didn't live through 9 11 but did live through the virus times um <clears throat> you know they're they're going to have completely different outlooks on life than our generation or other generations or the generations before us who lived through 
the world wars or the depression eras and things like that. So I, I do agree that history is written by the victors, definitely. And that <clears> that's interesting to research the oral histories that are handed down through different cultures, because you can really get a much better view of what probably happened. And many of those mirror what we're told in our Christian Bible. So it's interesting to compare those and it gives you a really a much better foothold on what probably did actually happen. Exactly. Like the, the flood, the flood <laughs> is worldwide. There is every, every tribe, every, you know, native um, group civilization has written about a catastrophe, like, you know, this, this, this destructive flood, yeah. everyone, everyone. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, and it's still, it still gets denied, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh, it, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how people won't or don't want to see the truth because, and, and this is something I started saying is that if we start acknowledging truths that go against what we believe, part of us has to die. We have to actually like release that part of us, let it die mm -hmm. so we can be <laughs> re reborn yes. in, with this new wisdom, with this new knowledge. And it's difficult because we know saying goodbye to a loved one is difficult, let alone saying goodbye to part of yourself. And, right. and, and I had to do that with some things that I discovered, you know, or, or started questioning. I won't even say discovered. I would just say started questioning. I had to mm -hmm. let go of some of my beliefs and, and it was hard. It was very, very hard. Oh, I understand that very well, too. I have gone down so many different paths and different roads looking for information, enlightenment, spirituality, different things. And I would find something I thought was real. And then I would realize it wasn't and have to let go of that. And, and for me, it was about allowing my paradigm space for that to, to shift and to open up and to just kind of no longer exist and no longer create these these rails that held it in, so to speak, and, and defined me. And now I just kind of let the Holy Spirit define me and what I believe in the direction I go. And it's such a freeing way to live because it takes away these, these blinders that society has placed on us. And you, you really do look at things with a new, with fresh eyes. And, it, and I think it's wonderful to be able to do it, but you're right. It is, it is difficult because it's comfortable. It's so comfortable to just sit in that little space and be like, I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm going to watch the evening news and sit in my home and go to work and come home and pay my bills and never think outside of the little box that's been created for me. And you can do that. That's fine. But at what cost is it going to cost someone else learning the truth because you weren't there to share it with them, you know, and, and those are the things that keep me up at night, you know, and, and so, and the things that keep me searching for truth and wanting to hold that lantern with you, you know, uh, there we <laughs> I mean, go. Ex exactly. Right. Yes. You know, and, and, and I find it very, sometimes very alienating, uh, doing that as well, you know, because I have alienated a lot of people in my life, you know, from speak, because I was, I've been speaking the truth and, you know, it ended a lot of relationships, but I also found that it opened a bunch of new doors and we have to be able to accept that as well, that we will have to say goodbye to some and hello to others, you know, and there, there was a song, you know, for every, for every goodbye. I mean, so for every hello, there's a thousand goodbyes. It, <laughs> sometimes it, it, it feels, it feels that way. But mm -hmm. speaking of like um, hellos, uh, what about, is there any new information that you've come across anything, you know, groundbreaking um, information or anything along that line? Well, it seems like there's always movement now in the UFO community or UAP or however you want to say it, especially since the last congressional hearing where we had whistleblowers like David Grush. So I try to keep on top of that. I try to share that in my, you know, very short videos on, on uh, social media because you can't put much on those. Um, I think the biggest one right now is that we have another congressional hearing coming up in November, and hopefully this will happen. It's it's uh, scheduled for about a week and a half after the elections. I think 10 days after the elections, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, did they do that so people wouldn't pay attention? Um, but there's supposed to be some really interesting whistleblowers. Um, in, it's going to be chaired by Nancy Mace. And if anyone watched the last one, she had some very intriguing and pointed questions. She's, you know, asked David Grush, did you have crashed craft? Did you have non-human biologics? She asked him some questions he couldn't answer for us, but were taken to 
what's called a skiff, which is a secured, you know, a secured location um, type thing. So it's it's not something that we get to be privy to. But um, and I don't know if um, your listeners are familiar with all that, but I do have like I do provide a lot of definitions for things like that. And I'm just looking right now to um, provide more of that and make sure I give you the accurate descriptions and not you know having it 10 days after the election because i don't care who wins there is going to be i don't want to say riots but there's going to be protests no matter who wins people are going to be very upset so this might just you know get brushed underneath the carpet like you know like there will be some of us who will be paying attention and but for most part it's gonna it's not gonna get garner the attention that it should no and it's unfortunate because honestly i'm not sure that it matters who wins you know the powers that be are the powers that be do they change we don't know we just don't really know um but yes skiff is i'm sorry i said i agree oh. <laughs> i totally agree with you it's it's like you know like it's the left wing and the right wing but it's of the same bird you know kind mm -hmm. of thing it's exactly it's still same bird um i love that analogy um so a skiff is a sensitive compartmented information facility and all that means is that we don't get to hear it, but people have to have special clearance to hear that information. So last time during those congressional hearings, we heard them say quite often, well, let's take that off into a skip. I can't discuss that here. So it was a ton of just special information. And a lot of that comes from what they call SAPs or special access programs. And these are programs that are highly sensitive that people have to have very special clearance for. And you find these special access programs all over the the governmental systems, and most of them, you know, don't obviously don't talk to each other because they're different programs, and so they're not open for general information, and it just makes it even more confusing. And then within those programs, they have what's called a B I G O T list, and it sounds terrible to use that word bigot, but <laughs> I it, was like spelling it out by mind. I'm like B I G O T. I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> right, it's it's terrible. It it started. The origins of it are um are questionable. Some say it came from during um like World War II in Britain, and they used it when people were going to um be it backwards. It's um to um, go to, to Jib, to Jib, to Gibraltar. Sorry. I had to think about that. And that was the people were going, people were being, um, deployed to Gibraltar, but if they were going to go a different route, a more secure route, they flipped it and it was bigot. And then that became a high security clearance, um, word that they used for that and it became like a code word. Okay. So, it, so, so I find sometimes they take words and then they they don't flip, I don't mean like literally flipping them, but they flip mm -hmm. them in their meanings to create something that negative that no one wants to talk about, right. you know, or or like this, you know, if mm -hmm. it is a high high security clearance word like bigot, no no one wants to say no you're a bigot that. or right. yeah, it, it, it's the same thing like when when people were searching um, Walt Disney Frozen, you know, some people were looking for if Walt Disney was frozen. But now oh. we have Walt Disney. If you search Disney Frozen, of course you're coming up with the movie Frozen. So it's kind of like yes. like they, they steal they, they steal the the actual you know steal direction meaning. or the traffic. Yes, yes, yes exactly. So they redirect. Kind of redirect, like what, redirect. Yeah, it kind of sounds like maybe what they did with this. Uh, as I, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. No, but. I think you're absolutely right because if you look at the Wilson memo, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but I, I no, I have not. Please so educate this, me. This is a memo that um were notes from a meeting between eric davis and admiral wilson admiral wilson was a very high up um executive in government offices he was um i don't i have his pedigree here somewhere but i'm not going to find that to read y'all you can look it up and find it just look up wilson memo you can find out all about it. anyway so this gentleman had a meeting with him about just sharing and they were just talking sharing new information about ufos and uaps and and the programs surrounding those and this memo and i have it here you can find it on various government sites it's long it's many pages i will of, put I'll, i'm going to put a link on the screen yeah. so if people want to see that they can actually click the link I, and go there. I recommend reading it and here's why in 2022 when they first started doing the uap 
um, the UAP congressional hearings, this was actually read into the record. So that verified this document as authentic. So by bringing it up in the hearing, it authenticated the document. It was really interesting how someone managed to figure out how to do that and get around it. So now we've got this document authenticated. And this is where that word bigot came in. And, and it's used liberally throughout this document but it didn't make sense. I'm like, what is that word that they keep using? And, you know, so I had to look yeah. it up. A lot of code words used in here, but in this document, Admiral Wilson at the bottom, he says, yes, Miller asked the question on MJ-12 UFO cabal crash UFO. Confirmed. He called Miller late June 97 and told Miller that he was right. There is such an organization in existence. That's just one little section of this. This document confirms the Majestic 12 or MJ-12, which is a group that was created way back when during the Eisenhower days, where it was a bunch of high ranking members when they started to put together this kind of group of we're the only ones who are going to know what's going on with UFOs and UAPs and extraterrestrials. And then it talks about, you know, the crashed craft. This talks about crashed craft and retrieval and all kinds of interesting stuff. So highly recommend. It's a great read. It's a little hard to follow. Um, but it is interesting and I will probably write a synopsis on this for anyone who's interested in, um, LA Marzulli's monthly newsletter. I will let you know when that comes out. I will give you a link so that they can go. It's like $12 or it's like it's $2 a month for his monthly newsletter. And you get tons of amazing people writing for this. Vicki Joy Anderson writes there. I do Mondo Gonzalez, LA Marzulli, tons of people. Fritz Zimmerman, uh, all kinds of great people write every month for this newsletter. And um, when I do, I will put a little synopsis for your um, for your social media and give you a I link love that. where they can love get that. that. But um, so, yeah, because I find people have a lot of questions about this. And I had a lot of questions, too. So I did a deep dive into who these people were, what they were talking about, what their backgrounds were. And, yeah, there are all kinds of interesting people that were meeting with this guy, not just these two people, but there are a lot of people involved in this. Something I recommend everybody, if you have a chance to read, and like I said, I will provide a nice update because it's a lot and more than we could even cover in this. Um, this I, I would definitely like to talk like more that. about, especially the Majestic 12. You know, that, that is something that I have heard before. I've watched a small documentary about that. I think it was called mm -hmm. Over Majestic, and uh, yeah. I definitely would love to know more about that. But yes, yeah. yes, that's I interesting. I think as we get on down the line, and now that that is so far kind of in the past, those things are starting to come back around, and they're starting to be released, although heavily redacted those documents are now getting released and we're getting more and more information through the Freedom of Information Act here. They just released about 110 pages, and I have that here somewhere too, I can show you, of previously unreleased government documents. That's not, anyway, and it is, it is heavily redacted and it's 101 or 111 pages, I can't remember which, but what it is, is this back and forth emails between all these high ranking officials talking about um, creating this, the UAP, about the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023 that was created and how they were going to disseminate this information. And it's very interesting. It didn't have a lot in it, but it, it did have a little bit of information. So we are getting more and more as as time goes on. And then apparently in the next congressional hearing in November, we are supposed to have some interesting whistleblowers coming on board. They haven't released any names yet. And I don't blame them because these people's lives are potentially in danger. I know that Grush was threatened in many different ways and others dropped out because of those threats, apparently alleged threats. So we'll see, but there are supposed to be some um, interesting um, um, whistleblowers and Nancy Mace was quoted um, and she did an interview with Askapol as saying that she wanted people who knew the real shit, um, the real shoot or whatever. I don't know what I can say. Oh, that's on. fine. The real shit. Yeah. yeah. Wanted yeah the real shit. Yeah. So she wanted real people who knew real shit. And that was her quote and that she's going to have, you know, so it sounds like there's going to be some interesting people. And then recently this last week, there was an article, and sorry, y'all, I keep looking to the side because I don't want to misquote anyone. Not a problem, not a problem. That upsets me to, to do that. But 
there was um, this, an article, uh, the guy's last name is Schellenberger, and he wrote an article about the fact that now, and you might've heard this, there's a lot going around social media right now about um, a program called Immaculate Constellation. And I've been searching for confirmation on that. And there just is nothing out there. Um, someone did a, a search to see how often it was searched and searches for that came up during the last congressional hearing. So they were worried maybe that someone was already leaking that last year, but it hadn't. But now it has been leaked that a new whistleblower has emerged alleging, alleging that the Pentagon is illegal, illegally hiding a secret UAP UFO program called Immaculate Constellation. So I'm guessing this is someone who's going to be coming up in the next UAP congressional hearing. But like I said, they keep, we keep getting these little bits and pieces of information. Um, it will be interesting to see what actually comes out of this. And if anyone pays attention, my thinking is if everyone's so focused on the elections and the election results, we might have a fantastic congressional hearing on this because they think no one's watching. And I really I, kind of hope that's the case. You know? I agree. I agree, actually. That, that, that's, you know, they, they're going to fly under the cover. You know, they're trying to fly under the rain, radar of this. You know, it very much yeah. could be that. Now, now speaking of like, um, like whistleblowers, mm -hmm. just, you know, this name always comes up was Bob Lazar. Yeah. What mm -hmm. what is your thoughts on Bob Lazar? Is he legit or is he being fed false information or what what do you feel about Bob? You know, from watching him and watching his interviews and just seeing the way he reacts to questions and stuff, I really think he's legit. Um I think he has had a lot of involvement that he can't ever talk about and he's trying very hard to get people to look in the right places without saying it. And one thing, you know, I, I did a little snippet on one of my social media posts about the fact that the James Webb telescope had found evidence of life on a distant planet. And I wasn't sharing that to um, identify that I believe in the plurality of worlds. Cause I really don't. Um, what I was sharing that for is because a, I just, believe the universe is just so vast we have no idea and most of us just need to really think about how big it is and b because they keep trying to get us they the powers that be the mainstream media and the narrative keeps trying to get us to look out there way out in space right and i don't think that's where we should be looking i was taken and i wasn't taken to another planet or way out in space if I was, I don't remember it. Was, did we travel through the air and through space? Oh, yes, absolutely. But I was taken to underground facilities, whether they were underground, underwater, you can't say, because once I'm down there, it, those facilities are huge. They could have spanned from under the earth to underwater. There's just no telling. Um, and we know that there are underwater, sub, there are unidentified submersible objects and you know, aerial and USOs and UAPs and UFO and all the, yes. So we, um, you know, so I think that aside from being underground and under our feet and interdimensional, you know, that information tells us that these entities are right here with us, but they've got everyone looking out to far distant galaxies thinking we won't get any answers until we get there. And I just don't think that's the case. And I think it's just another red herring. You know, it's a look over here instead of over there. And um, I'm seeing more and more of that. And and that I find concerning because it means they're still playing this game with everybody. And it's unfortunate. And I don't, I really don't think we'll ever get any kind of full disclosure. But I do hope we continue to get some further confirmation of the things that have happened. As And we have been getting bits and pieces all along. Um, and you just brought up USOs, so I'll pause here to take a breath and let you ask a question because I have a, some information that's just come out about USOs as well. I, I, okay, I'm, I'm interested in that. But yeah, I so I, I do have a question about this, though, is mm -hmm. it's something I've always wondered. So are they living here? Is this their planet or did they 
are they stationed here? Are some of them stationed here and live on a, another planet? Like maybe they are up above, but they are stationed here. Or do you believe like they inhabit the same planet that we do and we just, mm -hmm. you know, if they're interdimensional, we don't see them in this dimension unless they want us to see it or they've come here to abduct us. Right. Um, I think it's a combination. I mean, I do think they reside here. I think they reside underground and under the water in these massive facilities that I have been in and facilities probably we will never see. Being interdimensional, you know, they could be residing across from me and across from you in the rooms that we're in, just in a different dimension that we don't see. You know, we can be residing in this, you know, look at quantum physics. We could be residing in the same space at the same time, just in different dimensions. Um, they could be on other planets just as bases of operation because it's easier to stay out of our way, but we don't know what their limitations are. I, it seems to me based on my experience that they had a difficult time being in our atmosphere and in our sunlight, and they had to create an environment for us, those of us who are being taken where we could breathe easy and we could be in a, you know, in a compatible atmosphere for us. But there was no direct sunlight there. That's something I noticed was never there. And the lighting was always very dim and indirect. So I do believe that has some correlation to why they're not up here on the surface with us all the time. And it could just be that the dimension that they're in is very different to ours, which I believe is probably the case. So to answer your question, yes, to all of those. I think all of those are actual possibilities and probably exist all at once. Fantastic. Thank you. And so, <laughs> okay, so USO. Yes, I'm looking for that article. So oh, I can. No, no problem. No problem. So, and, and it's interesting you say that about the sunlight, though, because with all this attempts right now to geoengineer our stratospheres, you know, our, our mm -hmm. you know, the ionosphere um, mm -hmm. to put reflective material in, you know, in the atmosphere to try to reflect the sun. I wonder, you know, is that possibly to, I don't know, fabricate a world where, which is a, a lot more easier for them to reside in? Right. Because what do we really know about what's going on? I mean, first we're told there's no ozone layer. Then we're told it's repaired itself. Then we're told this and that. Every, it changes all the time. I'm like, so what is the truth? Yeah. Are they trying to create some kind of a atmosphere? Are they getting instruction? That is a highly likely possibility. Um so the the USO thing that I was talking about, and I wrote this in my article last month for LA Marjorie's newsletter, where I did a little update for everyone on what's going on with the congressional hearings, is a um, is that we have the um, Liberation Times um, had an article who was um, possibly uh, let's see, it was definitely shocking. It was a um, gentleman named Sharp, and he wrote that multiple programs are understood to be orchestrated by the CIA's Directorate of Science and Technology and its Directorate of Operations alongside the Department of Defense components, and they uncovered details of an alleged program focused on retrieving advanced crafts from beneath the sea, some reportedly of non-human or unknown origin, and it also involved not just the maritime branch of the CIA, the U.S. Navy, and um, others, but it also involved the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, who provided deep submergence vehicles to support the retrieval efforts. So um, it looks like what we're seeing is, and this has been going on for a long time, this is not something new, but this is something that there's just revealing, so when you think about a Roswell type, type crash, you think that people are seeing because it's happening in front of us, right? But what about the vastness of our oceans? How many of these Roswell type crashes have happened in the water that we're not aware of because we're not out in the middle of the South Pacific, you know, or out in, even in the middle, even just in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, you and I are both in areas that kind of border that, but we could never see more than, you know, of short ways out we would never yeah you know it. like 15 i might be able to see you know 10 kilometers 15 kilometers right. out and that's it and yeah. the, the oceans are so so vast you know it's so vast i mean it covers two-thirds of our planet or something like that so so you think about it, they've had these programs going on for how long how many 
crashes have they retrieved from under the water? How many yeah. non human you know, how many non human biologics have they pulled out of those? So we're just these things are just kind of leaking out one by one, but this information isn't on the evening news. It's not showing up in your news feed or on your social media or anywhere like that. I have to dig for this stuff, but it's right there. And this is new stuff. This isn't old stuff. These are new reports, but they're talking about old programs. Um, and then, yeah, it's on, uh, here's another one on October 9th. Oh yeah. I have this um, memo here on October 9th, this group called the NARA, which is the National Archives and Records Administration. This came out on October 10th. They sent a memorandum to all the federal agency records officers telling them that they had to transfer all their publicly releasable unidentified anomalous phenomenon records to them by September 30th of 2025. So now are they trying to create a whole new database? Now this is pub this is publicly releasable. They could be heavily redacted, but even if they're redacted, then it later says in this memo, and it's like a one page memo, and you can find this at the um, archive.gov that says they have to provide them the unredacted versions as well. So now who's gonna have access to this? And are we gonna be able to request this through FOIA requests. So now we're, you know, this is a whole new level of, and, and all of these specialized groups, these SAPs I talked about earlier, are they going to honor this? Because this is an act, this is an act of, you know, from the national archives. So this is something that has to be an act from the U S government. And this has to be, um, acted upon, they have to do this. So what are the repercussions if they don't? I mean, who's going to report on that if they don't, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm, I'm excited, you know, September, 2025, here we go. Yeah. But will it be worth anything? You know, I mean, I don't know. Um, and then, um, there's another one from representative Matt Gates. He seems to be, um, releasing a lot of information lately. He said it's now open source information that the CIA has a program around UFO craft recovery. It's not a question anymore. Um, so, and that's going back to the one I talked to you earlier about the um, Immaculate Constellation. So we're getting more and more confirmation on these things from congressmen. And they're saying this publicly in interviews. I'm like, well, where's he getting his information? You know, and was that in a skiff? And then why is he allowed to talk to us about that? So I know y'all, I'm throwing a whole lot of information your way. No, that's I'm fine. That is fine. That's what, that's what we're here for. We're, yeah. we're, we're trying to get this information out. And, you yeah. know, I just heard this today. It's like, um, always a student, sometimes a teacher, never an expert. <laughs> so I'm always learning. I'm always learning. Oh, and, and that's, that's part too. of it, you know? Oh, me too. I mean, if you could see my desk here, I have just piles and piles of papers and notes and little things that, you know, looking through, because because you have to read and you have to go through and you have to try to learn and keep up with it. And this is just kind of the tip of the spear of what's come out just in the last week or so. This isn't even the new stuff. And then if you look at the uh, UAPDA, which is the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023, that came out in December of 2023 after they started these congressional UAP hearings. And that was created to try to create a centralized area for all the UAP information, centralized reporting, and to disseminate and information to people and try to provide a pathway to disclosure. And it didn't get into, it's a part of the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Group. So it has to be approved every year with the budget. And this year it was not approved with, the, with that. However, they have said it probably could get airdropped into that budget at the last minute. So we are hopeful that it still makes it in, but it's still a bill. It was passed into law. So it, it's, you know, remember the I'm just a bill um, cartoons we used to watch it. It made it to a law. So it's still in there. Um, but um, and in that first one that was released in December of 2023, they redefined or defined so much of what the acronyms and what we know in the UFO community that when you start to listen to these congressional hearings, you're like, what are they talking about? 
which is why I take some time on my social media to define what some of these things are like skiff and things like that, because it's so confusing. Like they have, um, a completely new definition in here for, well, for things like UAP, it's not unidentified aerial phenomenon. It's an unidentified anomalous phenomenon. But after you get through the huge long definition, they say it includes things such as flying discs, flying saucers, unidentified aerial phenomenon, unidentified flying objects, and unidentified submerged objects. So, oh. <laughs> and do, do, you think that, do you think they're doing all this just to confuse us and and to to lose us in these hearings? But you know, playing a devil's advocate in in this one. Mm -hmm. Are they trying to take control of the narrative to direct us into a different way and to like, like a ma magician, you know, look over here and look over here what I got right. when actually something is happening over here, like the sleight of hand. Yeah. It's like rebranding a product. I agree with you. It's like, okay, this product was bad. Something happened. Say this product made a lot of people sick, but they want to go back to market with the same product, but a version that doesn't make people sick, right? So they just rebrand it. They gave it a new brand name, a new logo. Now instead of you know uh, this, it's it's that. It's a logo that you were was easily recognizable before. Now they're going to create a new one, but it's a happy logo. Now it's a happy face or something, you know. And and so. They're just rebranding it because they've spent so much time creating this narrative where if you say, I was abducted by aliens, people immediately look at you, point at you, laugh and say, you're crazy and you're joking and you're funny. I mean, for me to write this book and share this information was terrifying because the amount of ridicule and the amount of immediate sarcasm and ugliness that comes when you share this horrific information it's unbelievable, but I will say the amount of kindness and support and love and, and just, um, it's just, yeah, there's so much good came from doing this. I, you know, so many people came forward saying, I just read my life story. Oh my goodness. I know it. I don't feel like I'm alone anymore. You've made it okay for me to think I can talk to someone. I can talk to you. That was a, worth it. I'll take a hundred people screaming that I'm an idiot to just to have that one person come to me and say, I feel so much better about my life now. I'm not alone. This was okay. And I'm sorry, it chokes me up when I talk about that. But I see people's lives change when they realize, I believe you. You're not crazy. I'm not crazy. I may be a little crazy, but this isn't, you know, this is real. Um, and, and so, and it gives it gives people a voice where they never had a voice before. And so the rebranding of this does two things. It makes it, it creates a new arena for us to speak about it in. But at the same time, it leaves those of us who have been sharing these stories out there in the old arena. And it kind of leaves us behind a little bit. And so that's why I'm trying so hard to share the information about what this rebranding and this new information is so that we can stay with it and not be left behind. Because, you know, if you create a whole new place to go, we all have to go along too, or, or we're not going to be able to share. And, and so I don't know if that makes sense to people, um, what I'm trying to say, but it, it, it kind of alienates people of the old guard and the old school. And those of us who have been talking about UFOs and extraterrestrials all this time. And now we've got non-human intelligence and UAPs and USOs and all these new things that we have to change gears and go into that. And we have to bring all of our work along with us and all the people we know along with us and help everyone find their way into this new arena so that we can continue to share information and stay up to date with what's happening. And so it, yeah, I, I could go on for days about all the things that are going on, about all the changes. That's why I've changed my social media up and started sharing these bits of information every day. They're small, you know, you may not think it's going to be interesting, but I encourage you just watch through the end and maybe something in there will, will be helpful because that's why I'm releasing this stuff. I think we need to know what's happening and what they're saying now. I, I agree with you, Karen. And I feel, I feel sometimes though, when people try to 
take control of your experience and tell you what you experienced is the most demeaning thing in the world. Like I, I've had something happen to me recently, um, a couple of months ago, and everybody will li- will tell you what this is. No, this is you didn't see this. This is what you saw, and this is it. And and, and I'll do a bit of an analogy. So I had, uh, I you know, I had plantar fl- fasciitis like years and years and years ago. So I know how that pain feels. Recently, I got a nail into my uh, into my Achilles tendon. Okay, and oh, it was I'm extremely sorry. painful. But let me tell you, the pain was almost identical as plantar fasciitis, like where I felt the pain. So if if I told you. I had a nail stuck into my foot, but this is the pain symptoms I'm getting. And you're like, no, that's plantar fasciitis. And you disregard the experience. You disregard that I had a nail stuck into my Achilles. You're like, no, that's plant. That is what's happening. I had an experience where I'm going to, I'll, I'll be quick. I'm going to tell you about this experience. So oh, this experience no, I, I walked into a, I started to walk into this grocery store and all of a sudden I started seeing distortion. Okay, distortion everywhere. And it, and it started as a line and it opened up and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, when I posted this, everybody's like, oh, that's an oral migraine. Or no, 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 not an oral, because uh, oral is, is it's, most. It's, a, yeah, Op- it's, it's, it's the optic. called the aura. It's the aura. Yeah, people call a similar thing to that. I have migraines. I get migraine auras where I lose my vision completely because it's just like TV screen fuzz starts and takes over my vision so okay I understand that but that's yes, not what so you're describing i've had the other thing that you've described i can tell okay you what when so you're done. I, I and and it like opened up and mm-hmm. i could see like this distortion of colors going this way and this way but i could see into it okay there was mm-hmm. something on the other side um and what i saw was very large would look like big mechanical fans turning in a counterclockwise motion. I could see them. It was like, it, it was like I was looking into a warehouse, an old, old abandoned brownish warehouse inside. And there was these large fans kind of in the background, slowly moving, just slowly. And, oh. and, and I was like, what is going on? You know, I'm uh, slightly terrified and I'm like, this is not good. Uh, so I finished buying what I needed to buy at the deli counter <laughs> paid for my stuff, left, and I drove, which everyone's like, you shouldn't be driving. And I'm like, well, I have no idea what's going on. And they're like, well, that's just an oral migraine. I'm like, okay, I understand that, or sorry, an aura. An aura, that's right. aura migraine. Yeah, I'm like, I understand what this part and this part looks like that, but I saw something beyond it. I saw something inside of it. Yeah. That, and, and that's why I use that analogy with the nail in my Achilles tendon and I explained this and like, no, you just have plantar fasciitis because you're describing that pain. I'm like, no, but I had this too. No, we're going to disregard that. But mm-hmm. that is what happened to me. And you said you had something, an experience like this too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, I would do you want me to, to tell you that. what I thought mine was before you tell me what yours is? I wonder if 100% I want to know. There are two different things that I've had happen that are similar to that. One is a, a portal opens up and you're seeing a time portal where you're seeing either forward or back in time, because for us, time exists on this linear path, but that's just for us. When I had my near death experience, time did not exist like this. Time was happening all at once and not at all at the same time. Past, present, future was all in this one space. And unless you've experienced it, it's hard to explain. Or the other thing I've had when I've had things like that open up, I've had in front of me, it'll open up like a square like this clear as day and I can see through it, but it's when someone's trying to remote view me and then I have to block them. Um, So I've had two different types of experiences, but they're similar where that opens up and you can see. So I don't know if that's what you were experiencing. I, so I've never, I've never experienced that before with the uh, remote viewing. Mm -hmm. It, it definitely, for me, and I, I was like, it's a a rip in the time. It's a rip in reality is kind of what I, I thought. But mm-hmm. I, I don't, I truly don't know. You it know, sounds like it, you saw an older time for where you were, like a building that might have been there before. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. I, I agree. And I'm going to share a picture. So I talked about this recently. So the first time I kind of really talked about it on air and someone 
um one of the 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 girl that was it was kind of a group of us podcasters and she's like Mm -hmm. oh it sounds like this and i forget the name of it but this Mm -hmm. is almost word for word i'm just going to present this uh right now this is kind of like word for word what i saw and what it looked like was something like this oh wow and and so this is a drawing of you know seeing through the the firmament Mm -hmm. and like these like these drawings like these things i'm like that's kind of what i saw and then whoa Mm -hmm. what is this up here big huge wheels like they look like big fans oh yeah like a wheel within a wheel like ezekiel's wheel or yes. Yes. second Th- heaven and stuff and yeah there's and they, the, the bible's full of descriptions that look like this that would look like this if you painted them i mean that's incredible yes, yes. so yeah. this is the the flemian flemian flamian i i can't remember but it was mm-hmm. it was she's like oh i just check this out and i was like Th- that is it. Whoops, as we're a switch over here now. So I oh, was like, right. "Yeah, you can go to the big." <laughs> yeah. That, so that that is the best description of what I saw. And, and my mm-hmm. friend Brad was like, "You should try drawing this out." I'm like, "I'm a horrible artist, but mm-hmm. I, I think I need to. I need to find someone who can help me to draw this." And mm-hmm. and and like there was rubble. I could see rubble, like 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 broken rocks and and mm-hmm. water, like wa- sitting pools, a little bit of water and dripping water and. And wow. people are saying, "Oh, that's just an aura, uh, an aura migraine." And I'm like, "No, no, no. that's no. not an aura migraine at all. I've had so many of those. That's not it at all. You saw through either into a second heaven or into I wouldn't say heaven on this one. I, I would definitely not say heaven onto this. I would say well, that the heaven does refer um, to oh, okay aspects, not okay. so much." seeing him but what we're talking about when you say that like it, biblically it just refers to like dimensional aspects of spaces like we live in the first and then above the atmosphere would be kind of like the second well, we can't see it but it's right here but it's outside of that you know so it's so hard to yeah have have you read in the bible the elijah and elisha scenario where okay well he's elijah is there with his servant elisha elisha and they're going to battle and his servant is terrified because he's like, there's no way we can defeat these huge armies. There's so few of, you know, it's, and without having it in front of me, I know I'll mess it up and I'm going to try to give you just a really quick synopsis. So he prays to God to let his servant see what he sees to open his eyes. And his servant comes out and suddenly he can see like what you saw, what's in this next realm, what's in the other realm. And he sees the chariots of fire and these sons of God, these angelic beings who are poised for battle to go to battle with them. And he sees how many, just that there are thousands of them there with them going into battle and he's no longer scared, but he couldn't see that. We don't see that because we are limited to our time and space. And it sounds like you got to see something really incredible and really amazing and that few people will ever be spiritually allowed to see but you know god blesses us with those things for a reason and wow that sounds really incredible i i prayed actually that i didn't want to see it anymore so maybe maybe because i was i was scared uh, yeah, I was I like, you. what is going on? This has never happened to me before. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe I need to ask, you know, okay, I think uh, mm-hmm. I think I'm ready for it. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, like as long as it's a, a safer time, you know, something when I'm because yeah. I got home and I told my mm-hmm. wife, I said, uh, I think I got a headache. I'm going to go lie down. And, and and that's what I wrote in the story that I said that. Mm-hmm. So everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, because you said you had a headache. And I'm like, no, no. I said, I think I had mm-hmm. a headache because I just wanted to, you know, like. I needed to lay down because I don't know what's going on. And uh, right. it, it was, and, and, and I would say after 15 to 20 minutes, it went away. And and I also tried checking my eyes. I was like, and, and I was like, maybe it's one eye. No, no, I, I can see it with both. So I, I could close one and, and still see this. Well, what I would say is that, I mean, we don't know, you know, we have to listen to our fears. Babies are afraid. If you show a baby a picture of a bunny or a little bunny, they'll just smile and most of them will smile and coo and want to touch it, play with it and hold that, that, you know, stuffed animal or whatever it is. And if you show them a picture of a rattlesnake, they'll jump back instinctively. We know what to be afraid of. So if you did feel fear, it could be one of two things. A, instinctively it was dangerous and that wasn't something that you want to be around or be messing with. And so it was good to go leave that place, pray about it, 
you know, and get away from it. Or it could be the fact that anything that's unusual or new to us can be shocking and frightening. So I would put it on one of those two levels. And if it was me having had that experience, right, I would call my friend Vicki Joy Anderson and talk to her about it because she's amazing insight and knowledge about those things. And she is the one person I trust when I have experiences like that to make sure that I'm dealing with it in the right direction because I want to make sure. And she has never, I have always felt comforted and relieved after talking to her about those things. So, and for anyone else out there that, If this rings true, sounds familiar, you've had a similar thing, I'll hold up her book because I have it here. Vicki's been on the show. She wrote this book. They only come out at night, the dark, um, exploring the dark weapon of sleep paralysis. She's so much more than sleep paralysis, but her website is VickiJoyAnderson.com and you can find her on social media. If you find me, you'll find her. Um, And just reach out to her or go to her website. You'll find a wealth of information. I travel with this book because it's like a reference book for me. And I find I'm more vulnerable when I travel and I travel a lot. And, um, you know, it's, this is really helpful. Um, so I wanted to share something, Karen, as well, you know, like this initial, I was scared because I was seeing it, mm-hmm. but you said you have like this, so I was scared because I was seeing it because there's something unknown, but my deep feeling inside, and, and this is something I have not talked about, was it's always there. It, 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 was, it was as if I could see it now. I could see it, but I've always felt that this is there. And, and I, I want to be specific on that saying like, oh, I know this is always there. No, it just had this, this feeling that... Okay. I, I, that it's there, that it's always there. Wow. Okay. So that does sound like a dimensional thing. You know, what we don't understand about dimensions <clears throat> and interdimensional beings and, and all, and, and I, a while back, I read a book on quantum physics for dummies or something like that. I can't remember what it was called or 60 seconds or 60 minutes to quantum physics, something like that to give me the basics because I was after my near death experience, I had so many questions and no answers. And I was getting so confused because it's more than my brain could handle, but I was trying to understand it because I have all this new information, like what you have now, and it just doesn't quite fit. And that really helped as well between that and the Bible. And then people like Vicki finding the right resources, the pieces started to get put into place. The problem is it's impossible to describe it to someone, (laughs) you know, because it just goes beyond the complexity of our language, let alone our ability to explain it. And so when like the near death experience, I can explain that I felt joy and peace surpassed any understanding and anything I've ever felt and was so amazing, but there's no way for me to describe it because we don't have it here you know and you wouldn't under you know it's like describing a new color how do we do that because it doesn't exist in our realm so there's nothing for me to compare it to and i think that's what you experienced too and and so whether it was good whether it was evil i can't say but it sounds like it was probably okay and it sounds like it was just such an amazing opportunity for you to see what's beyond our realm and how much more vast the universe is than we give it credit for. People think it's out there on other planets and it's not, it's right here in front of our faces. And that's what I think most are missing. And that's unfortunate. And and I actually think that's a perfect way to end this show tonight. It's like, (laughs) it's right here in front of our faces, you know, and it's not way out there. It's not, we're not looking, you know, a hundred light years away. It's here. It's now it's happening we need to talk about this and get this in the open and and we need to be there and support each other and uh you know we've had these experiences and whether you want to believe it or not you know it it, i will say it is so disheartening when people try to talk away your or explain away your experience and like try to and and one thing i said because they're like no no this is what it is this is an or an optical an optical uh uh migraine migraine. yes and i'm like well, can't they actually be related? Can't that actually 
because they're like, well, you don't actually get a mind, you don't get pain from it. But I'm like, why can't it be that we're actually experiencing this in Western medicine or the Western society is trying to talk it away, explain it away when we're actually seeing something more. Right. Oh my goodness. That's an incredible hypothesis. We have to look into that further. All right, y'all, you heard it here. Ryan and I are going to look into that and we're going to let you know what we figure out because I think there's something to that. I do too. More than, I mean, this is, you just put two pieces of a puzzle together that have been in different rooms for a long time. And, and, made I, and, and I think com- like, you never- know, separation is, is important for their control is to separate this. No, that's not what it is. That's what it is. And I said, and I said to some people, I'm like, why, why can't they be the same? And you know, there are so many people, cause I did this on Reddit, which is, you know, Reddit is a great place, but it's also one of the worst places. And you yeah. know, they're like, <laughs> they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And that's okay. But there were some people who reached out to me um, directly, you know, they didn't want to even post on the, on my post. They reached, uh, they messaged me directly, but that's mm. what happened. But with that, Karen, one last time, tell everybody where they can find you. Okay. Well, this has been an incredible conversation. I yes, feel like we talked about always. everything, but I there's so much more we could talk about. And so we'll just have to do it well, again. Well, I'm going to have to have you back. To... I, I was actually thinking, why not like you, me, and Vicky um, oh, have a- Yeah, we love a... to do that. We yes. love to do that. So yes, please, well, that'll be the next one. We'll get that scheduled. I will work on that with you after we hang up tonight. Um, you can find me at KarenWilkinsonAuthor.com. The book is exclusively at LAMarzuli.net or if I'm at events. Um, so you can get the book directly from me. You can get it directly from LA Marzuli's website. Um, follow his events wherever he is. You can buy the book there. Um, I am at some of the events, not all of them just depends on my travel schedule and my health issues. So unfortunately I'll miss a few, but I will be in Branson, Missouri in December at the prophecy watchers conference. I'm really looking forward to seeing people there. Um, so yeah, just check my social media. You'll, you'll see where I'm going to be there as well. I will post my, my, um, where we're going for conferences. And I just, you know, if you want to reach out to me, go to my website and send me an email that way. Um, or comment on a social media post. Uh, direct messages are hard for me to get to because so many of them end up in there. I only, you know, I'll have time to look for, well, like links like this, but otherwise it's really hard for me to wade through those. So send me an email. I love getting emails. I read those. I don't have somebody going through them for me. That's just, you know, going through. I do that. So reach out. I want to hear your story. I want you to know you're not alone. And if you have questions, you know, send those questions through too. I'd love to answer those for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciated it. I appreciate you. Thanks, Rye. Thanks. All right, everyone. That was Karen Wilkinson again on our show. We got to have her back again because, you know, these, these conversations are just amazing. I really, really thoroughly enjoy them. And, you know, I, I respect Karen's opinion and, uh, you know, and the experiences she's had. And I never knew she had an NDE experience. So that's definitely something I want to, you know, I wanted to talk about that, but I'm like, no, we're, we're hitting on the aliens tonight, but let's talk about that next time. Um, but with that, everyone, you know, like she was saying, everything is here. Don't be looking up at the sky. Well, of course you can look up the skies this evening, see a flying UFO, UAP, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, it, it's just semantics. It, they're the same thing. They're one in the same thing. So don't get hung up on that. They are out there. They are here. What is their purpose? Well, that's, that, that's, that's a whole other topic is what is their true intent with us? You know, why are they, why are they doing that? And, you know, buy Karen's book and read about her experiences. And you definitely will learn. You are definitely going to learn some stuff about that. And uh, yeah, so with that, everyone, I want to say, you know, thank you again for joining us here tonight. Keep your curiosity wandering, keep the light lit, and always find your way home.